I'll call the meeting to order. <laughs> Would you rise for the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, roll call. Ms. Mason. Ms. Bates. Here. Mr. Eden. Here. Mrs. Fryrick. Here. Ms. Leopold Sharp. Mr. Posnow. Mr. Robinson. Here. Mrs. Schrader. Here. Ms. Schaefer. Here. Mr. Toman. Here. Okay. Um, tonight is the May planning meeting, and um, as most of you know, uh, we do not vote at the planning meeting. We the planning meetings are devoted to um, discussion and deliberation, and there will be comment time for um, any member of the public with each agenda item. Um, all questions and comments should be addressed to the chair, and uh, board members will not normally respond to comments or questions during the meeting unless recognized by the chair, um, and that's the staff members as well. Comments may be limited uh, to five minutes or less, and Ms. Irwine is in charge of that. So uh, we'll start with um, uh, just the board president's report. I obviously am not Lynn Leopold Sharp. She's out of town this evening, so I'm filling in. And you'll see that there are, um, hang on a second, I'm looking at something different. Did this, wait a minute, hang on a second. Ah, I have the wrong agenda on my screen. I have the right one in paper. Okay, I, yeah, I'm good. So uh, the committee schedule is out. That's really just um, for you to peruse. And if you have any questions or comments, I guess, um, could direct those to the administration. Um, I don't have anything else to report on Lynn's behalf, so we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Uh, it's my pleasure tonight to start the superintendent's report with it, our division, our last division, six, uh, well, I guess it's our fourth report. Uh, Mr. Adams, I believe, will present tonight, or am I calling on Dr. Ellis first? All right, Dr. <laughs> Ellis, our high school principal, is pleased to give us an update on a really exciting uh, program that was implemented this year. As we considered what we might talk about for this report, there's obviously a lot of programs going on at the high school, but we instantly kept coming back to the idea of our FLEX program. Um, a number of years ago, we developed an advisory program to see <coughs> that as a big need in our school, just to develop some of the relationships. And over years, it has continued to morph and, and progress through feedback that teachers have provided and um, ultimately meshed into what we are calling our FLEX program this year. Uh, we shared a lot of information with the Academic Standards Committee as we moved towards this program, um, and ultimately uh, Dr. Adams really spearheaded the implementation this year, including right down from some work that he did for his own dissertation that was related to it. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to him to speak to our program. Thank you. Uh, the support that we did receive from the Academic Standards Committee was outstanding, which was nice, and, and Dr. Merkel and Dr. Maloney moving forward with something that we kind of saw as a need, as Dr. Ellis mentioned from a couple of years ago, where we had homeroom, and then we saw a need to try to build a different rapport with all of the students, and that became advisory, which now we've kind of moved into a different direction, into a more academic period, which we now call flex, which we believe is a true benefit to all of our students. Sometimes we do things, and it benefits pockets of students. This is one where every student has the same amount of time every single day and access to all of their teachers. So that's why we believe it's a benefit to all the, all the students. So the Daily Flex program, just what it is in a nutshell, is it's, uh, it's a 26-minute, what we call flex period, but we call it an academic period. At the end of every school day, every student is assigned to a flex room. We also link... Uh, the freshmen up with the two link crew members or one of the two link crew members that they have from the time they're freshmen because we saw that the freshmen come in on that first transition day and then oftentimes after that they may not have a real connection or a time to meet with the flex or with their link leader. So we try to put them in uh, the same rooms and then they'll carry through all four years together. Uh, students can, the number of different opportunities they have during that 26 minute period from getting help from teachers, making up work if, they, if they're missed for some reason. Yes, it's difficult to make up a test in there, but some do. Some scattered over two days where they'll start a test and flex, 
and complete the test from the TLC, but it's a great time to make up quizzes and labs. Our science, our science teachers are really loving it for that reason. They're able to study. They run study sessions. I, I'll walk by a room and see six or eight kids grouped around a teacher doing a, a physics study session. I've been in uh, room 160 and saw the physics teachers in there with two or three classes in there prepping for an exam. So it's, they're making good use. Even some of the things that we were originally thinking flex would be good for, uh, the teachers have found additional benefits for the use of that time at the end of the day. And students are able to do homework, and Peyton, I'm sure you can uh, attest to that. <laughs> uh, teachers also pull students, and that's why it's called a flex, because it's a flex of those courses that they have throughout the day. It's an additional time at the end of the day. So if teachers want to pull students, they'll give them a pass and say, please come meet with me at the end of the day or uh, students can also request to meet with a teacher during that time. We had a mid-year survey that we did with the, with the staff and with the students, and most students are reporting, and you can see the reporting working on homework, seeking assistance, or, uh, majority do value it. Um, they would like to see the time increase. I put strict up there because uh, on the survey, the one complaint and negative that we got was that it's strict, it's academic. So from their eyes, I understand why that's a negative. From our eyes, they didn't realize that when they reported that, that was actually making us feel pretty <laughs> really good. good. <laughs> that was positive. So here's just a couple uh, students that we had speak. Some of you may have seen a couple of these. Those are just a couple, and I just grabbed the one boy as he was walking <coughs> class and one as she was walking out of the cafeteria, so they didn't get to really get to think too much about what they were going to say. Uh, the teacher survey, 20% uh, of our teachers are reporting that they're bringing kids in, requesting to see five days out of the week, and an additional 20% are looking to bring them in three to four times per week, which is really good. 80% are uh, having the additional time is very beneficial. So. We've seen in the past, and I'll get to it in another slide, just some work where the teachers have them in class, but now they also feel like they have access to them even during the school day, but outside of their class period. So that, that's been a big benefit. Um, and then no teacher, and I think this is probably the one I'm, I feel the best about, the 92%, which is great, but no teacher reported that Flex was not valuable in some fashion. So if we can put a survey out to all our teachers and not get a, get a negative mark on that, that, we know we're doing something right. So that was a good thing. And then just a couple teachers.
sometimes it's one or two kids, sometimes it's three kids. So the teachers, the teachers are definitely using it, and it's, it's been really, really good for us. Uh, we've also seen <coughs> the percentage of A's per marking period increase per grade level. There were two exceptions, the ninth and 10th grade A's in uh, the third marking period when you're comparing last year to this year. There, um, everything, is, is A's had increased except for those two, and they were still, it was very close percentage, and the percentage of failing grades has gone down per marking period per marking period per grade level. So not that everything is attributed to flex, but it's it's certainly one of the support systems that we put in place itself. Teachers have access to students twice a day and vice versa. And I think that's been the big one. I think teachers feel like they have a better handle on the students because when the student leaves their classroom, oftentimes they wouldn't normally see that student till the next day or have access to them till the next day. Well now they know they have access to them that day if they need to see them. Additional support for all students, and, and I have lots of meetings. Well, I meet weekly with the two guidance counselors that I work closely with, and so does Mr. Shirey on his. And Flex is always coming up as one of the support systems for us. Uh, when I'm in parent meetings, they want to know about Flex, or they'll say to me, how about Flex? Like, how's that working? When can the student come in and meet with the teacher? And we always say, I think the big one is that we always say, uh, all of the teachers are available to meet with the students during that flex period. So they're not tied up, unless they're working with, they have something else going on, but it's not as if they have a class period when the student is free. Everybody is available at, during that flex period. So it's a constant during meetings. Another nice one is we've had fewer missed classes this year due to early dismissals for uh, either, this is solely on athletics too, by the way, I didn't take out other things, but when I pulled, I did this year's athletic early dismissal schedule and took it from the time that they missed this year and then I just took this year's athletic schedule and plugged it into what last year's schedule would have been and you can see for ninth period we had a 70 percent reduction in class time. Now that's not the full period like if they were missing in ninth period last year more than likely they didn't miss ninth period this year they just missed part of tenth period and we had a almost a 25 percent reduction in tenth period. So missed and makeup work, that's the benefit the teachers are feeling like they have a little more time with the students and a little bit better handle on when they can get students to come in and make up work. It's tough sometimes to get students to stay, especially the ones that are missing work, to get them to stay after school to go into TLC when the teachers themselves aren't there. But now they know they can bring them to their flex and uh, force might be a strong word, but uh, strongly encourage, I guess, uh, them to do the work in front of them. And then with just some other things that we weren't really thinking about until they actually happened. Tenth period is no longer the end of the day, and we, the teachers quickly realize that tenth period, as a kid goes through their entire day and they start to feel maybe a little tired or it gets to be 2.55 and you know, some eyeballs might be starting to go towards the clock. Well, now teachers realize tenth period ends now at 2.30. So even though they're probably thinking about their other day, they're not at, you're not at the end of the day yet. So the teachers have noticed a little bit difference in 10th period because it's not the end of the day. Uh, some of the learning support teachers are using some IEP support during flex time now, so it's additional time for them. Uh, and then as Mr. Mounts mentioned and some others, just the some enrichment opportunities. So, and I put the dots because we we thought we had a lot going on in flex and until we actually implemented it and have gone through a year now and other positive benefits are coming out of FLEX that I'm hopeful that uh, those dots will be filled in by something else as we continue to uh, build and, and shape FLEX into what's most efficient and effective for the students. And this is our, 
poster we have hanging all over the school. It's in the offices, it's in the classrooms, it's up on some walls, it's, it's everywhere throughout. So the students just know that you know, these are some of the expectations that we, that we have from them. And for the most part, I would say that they're doing very well. We have very few, I'm trying to think of even discipline, very few discipline referrals from Flex. So students are, students are doing what we need them to uh, during Flex. We had a few early on, just to, I think that was just some to set the tone, but it's been going really well. Good luck on the last two. I'm just saying, how do you keep enforcing that? And, and on the phones, we allow for the first five minutes to put their music on. And I'm sure some more students are using that. But um, just like in study hall, we even say, you know, get your playlists, get your phone, get your earbuds in. We know some people work better with music, so you can get them in, but then you shouldn't be accessing your phone. But I'm sure that they do. <laughs> That's good. There's a policy. Anything else? that you're, not, you're missing fewer classes, athletics aren't pulling people out of classes. It's not that athletics are no longer leaving at that time of the day, it's that the classes are ending earlier. Correct. So they're, lo they're losing time in flex. They're losing more to. flex time, correct, rather okay. than actual class time. And um, when, a, when can a student be mandated to come to see a, um, a um, teacher, or is that a suggestion? No, they can so originally we had uh, every day of the cycle set up for something different. So we had the four uh, main content areas. They, and I don't even remember what they are because we veered from that because we didn't have a problem with a math Because then originally we thought, okay, day one can be English, day two is math. That way the math teacher would have priority on day two. But we haven't been in the situation. So we've told all the students if and the teachers like if you want to see someone you give them a flex pass when you have them in class and then they have to come to you that day unless it's a content day that they've already been requested they go somewhere else mm -hmm. and we've had some students not show and then and then mr shirey and i deal with that a, a couple of things first thank you for the surveys um uh, that that helps me a lot in terms of hey is this working that to, to see those hard numbers that data that says and especially to survey the kids oftentimes you know that's sort of overlooked I think so I, I just to let you know I, I appreciate that secondly um, is there a time when you freeze in flex and I can have time with my flex students to do that relationship building and all, or is it, or am I always going to have students coming into my room for help? Do well, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. We, we went, uh, we went all in this year with more of the academic. There are, I've walked past flexes before on say Fridays towards the end, and it's more of there's some talking going on. It's it's a little bit looser of an atmosphere on certain days. <coughs> But that's the one area where some teachers were saying where we went away from advisory, which was more of the relationship building and just let the kids debrief a little bit. That's one area where some teachers said, hey, we need to bring that back some. We need to, you know, maybe once every other cycle, once a month, we kind of get together and maybe do uh, maybe a club period. Maybe we do something else more what we would have traditionally have thought of advisory. Yeah. So we're, we're, figuring out what's going to be best and how to fit that back in because some, some teachers want that too and some students. That was on some of the student surveys as well. Yeah, good. Thank you. And that's in the research <laughs> that I did, so I know we need to fit it in there. Thank you. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? Okay. Thank you for sharing that. I'd like to acknowledge the high school administration for a job extremely well done with this. Um, when they approached us with the idea, I it acknowledged that I was cautious, um, and they pushed back, and they crossed every T and dotted every I. And when, when you walk through the building in the first few weeks of school, because I wanted to see it in action, um, what I saw was for the first five minutes a flurry of activity as students moved to their sites, but then it was a very, it is a very quiet time during the school day where students are in their classrooms. There's not a lot of movement, and um, 
really is extremely well done, and, and you gentlemen are to be congratulated and, and, and thanked for, for a job well done and a, a, a terrific addition to the high school program, so thank you. Also, Dr. Perman deserves more credit as well in that because she was part of the planning process. Dr. Who? <laughs> thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Dr. Furman, thank you. Uh, next on the superintendent's report is a charter school update. And, and you may recall last month's meeting, um, there was some notation of the increase in charter school expenses and anticipation of that continuing into next year. So I put together just a, a very uh, quick update. Uh, uh, Mrs. Gross has been responsible for the tracking of charter school. She pulled together several spreadsheets for me uh, to take a look at this, but given the transition we're anticipating in the next two months in that job, I took her work and built it into a, a, a summary to give us a sense of where we are and, and then a couple of next steps. Um, so what we have here is taking a look at students who enrolled this year. So this is not the total picture <laughs> of all the students in charter school. This is the students who enrolled in charter school this year. And this is quite a number of them to have 47. And quite frankly, it's, it's more than, than I was attuned to. Um, but uh, there's a couple of pieces I want to point out. If we look in, it, and this is by grade level, at kindergarten, we had six enroll in kindergarten and and that's the full day kindergarten program um, and since gathering these numbers I've asked Dr. Ketterman and Dr. Stoltz to follow up with those six families for two reasons one to to find out what it was that attracted the folks to and uh, these were all York students by the way the, the 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 six charter school students in kindergarten were all Yorks what what attracted them to Yorks and then two is there any chance that we'll get any of them back um, and in all six cases, it was the full day kindergarten, um, which reinforces our decision with, with moving toward full day kindergarten. Uh, that pays for a teacher uh, right there. The, the, those six students uh, is, is a full teacher with benefits. Um, but that, uh, it, it looks like we may get, we know we have one registering and this, a second one is considering it. But again, now that the others have had a taste and the children are in, they're gonna stay. And so it's not just that single year cost that we've been paying for the full day kindergarten or the lack thereof, it's, it's accumulated over time. Um, and so again, no real great patterns. We do see an increase in ninth, 10th, or ninth, 10th and 11th grade. We see higher numbers there. Um, and, and again, that's a larger tracking that we have to do to go back and look at all of our enrollment history to see, say, is that a trend? This is a single year snapshot that I, t that I took a look at to say, how did this grow this year? Um, students enrolled this year by enrollment date, and, and that's to get a sense of are there students, were they starting out the year with uh, that decision to move to a uh, cyber charter, or was it, did it accumulate over the course of the year? And largely you see that August and September um, and for many, September is a starting date, so largely that's the, the, the large majority of the students started the year. It wasn't that they abandoned ship um, at some point during the school year. So when you say that 47 in total, when you say they enrolled <coughs> this year, that's... They were first-time enrollees in charter school for the 16-17 school year. So then our total number that's actually in charter is larger than 47? It's double that, yes. Uh, yes, okay. yes. This is why did it grow this year? Yeah. Now, we, we lost some, but this is why... 47 this is, new ones this year? Correct, wow. yes. Okay. And then when we look down at enrollment by school, just to give you a sense of what schools they're going to, I don't know how important that is to, to folks. Yorks, obviously, with eight of them there, six of them being our kindergarten enrollees. Um, and again, that's just the new ones, the, the ones who enrolled just this year. Um, look at uh, the note there, 19 out of 47, 19 out of the 47 students who enrolled this school year never attended York Suburban. So it may have been an Eastern student who, instead of moving into York Suburban, went to a charter. Or from York City was the highest number. And, and in some cases, um, rather than coming here, it was a more familiar routine. And that was, um, we saw that with Lincoln, 
and Crispus Attucks and PA Cyber were the three where most of the city students went. Um, so what are our next steps? The, review the list with the principals. They're very much looking forward to the admin team meeting on Wednesday of this week when they'll get their lists. Um, they've done this before, uh, and <coughs> we'll spend some time over the summer reaching out to these folks and seeing um, what the reason for departure was if they left York Suburban or folks who have never been to York Suburban to say, you know, we're a pretty welcoming place. How about giving us a shot? And so look at uh, that recruiting method. Um, they'll work, principals will work with counselors. Counselors do a lot of that work for us. Um, identifying the families that are appropriate to contact. Some families we may have a history with and, and may identify this as a, as a positive placement for a student for one reason or another. Um, and, and then look at um, what programs we should be using to help families understand that they're missing out on with their children. And, and so that's the snapshot of this year, that's the growth, and that's the plan of attack. Now, uh, with Mrs. Gross's departure, we're going to lay this out at admin team meeting on Wednesday. And again, largely it does fall on the principals, but Dr. Ketterman will pick this responsibility up and come to us in July or August with something of a report of how we've done with these 47 folks. Any questions? Mrs. Schrader. Can you just easily go along this chart and tell me which one of these schools, is it just one that's a cyber school? Is it just PA cyber? No. Agora is a cyber. Com Commonwealth Charter Academy is a cyber. Reach is, a, they're nearly all cyber. Lincoln, Yarks, and Crispus Attucks are not. Achievement okay. House and oh, Helen okay. Thaxton is not. I apologize. So PA cyber is a charter. Commonwealth Charter. Agora. Reach 21st century and PA distance. So many of them, the majority of them, are are cyber. That's what I was just thinking. It's hard, I think, for us to compete with a, <coughs> somebody who thinks they want all cyber because that's not who we are. That's why I was trying to. If the decision the is is if the decision is actively seeking charter, or is the decision right? a concern about something and, and moving away from something as opposed to moving towards something. Right. You're correct. Right, right. So that's interesting. A, a, a considerable number then are, are looking for charter, presumably. Or resorting to charter because of a, uh, some, point. some concern or fear. I, I look at 19 of the 47. Now, six of those 19 were kindergarten. But 13 students were moving from a traditional school setting to York Suburban and chose instead to go to a charter. Say that number again? 13. 13, okay. 19 minus the six kindergartners. Okay, got it. Spade. So, it is, and I know this is not, maybe you haven't done this, but I'm wondering how many, we had a lot in, um, in charters, uh, was it last year, must have been the year before, that you went and you did the whole writing letters and meeting with people and a lot of people came back. So do we know out of those people that were gone, came back, or in here and left again? Do we know those numbers? I don't know those numbers. I can tell you that it's not, it, it's maybe only one or two of these 47. Okay. Well but that doesn't mean there aren't other of the other 47. But was it... When was that, that you made that concerted effort? Was that last year? It was actually, it a year? Was it two years ago? Might have been three years ago. A long time ago. I think it was, okay. yeah, <laughs> before I was super, I think it was my last year as assistant superintendent. Oh, okay, never mind. So that's, I mean, I, I thought it would, if it was last year, then, yeah, yeah. You know, they have a short memory. But we we'll be going back, back at that. Yeah. When you go to all these people, are you going to concentration of just these 47 or all the students? We're going to start with the 47 and then see it, it's, um, it's, we're going to start <coughs> there and, and then we'll evaluate the list and we won't necessarily call off all 47. Um, there, there may be reasons not to call some or, but some we'll start with this list and then evaluate. This may be, for lack of a better word, the hardcore, they're, they're there Correct. to stay. Correct. You're not going to change If them. you have a family tradition that's done then, this then and it's the fourth gonna... child, then we become pests. And, and that's not our intent. Our okay. intent is to make sure they're aware the opportunities that York Suburban has for them, um, and uh, and 
if we can be an attractive alternative for them. Any other questions from the board? I have a, I have a question, Dr. Merkel. Um, so I, I think what I heard is all these communications with um, trying to reach out are done via phone. Are they ever done face-to-face, -face, or was that any consideration? Actually, a number have... I asked Mrs. Gross to go back and pull the letter that was sent the last time, and she pulled that up today, actually. And, and so the first piece will be by, by mail. And it's a letter, and it helps folks. Um, it, it's, a, it's a friendly welcome, but it also then has some data attached to it about the difference between achievement at York Suburban versus many of these schools. They're not all listed on it. Um, the second, then, is a follow-up phone call. And in that phone call, the counselors and principals are inviting people to come in and see. And so this, most of our success stories, people have come in and seen and spoken and then made the decision to come in. But that's not, it, we, again, we can't always get them to come in. But there, it's always an invitation as a part of that phone call. Okay. Any questions from the audience? Okay, okay thank you. Uh, next under the superintendent's report, the administration will be recommending approval of the application for Act 80 days for the next school year uh, for the dates listed. They are in service days. Uh, while we don't necessarily need them for Act 80 days, it, it's one of those things that it's nice to keep in your pocket should we have the need um, because of lots of snow days or lots of other things. Again, not something we go in with the intention of needing to use. Um, to, to, but it, it, the opportunity exists. Questions? Okay, thank you for your work on that, Dr. Maloney. Um, th the next two items are about the addition of full-time aid positions that we'll be recommending at the next board meeting. Um, the, the May meeting will ask you to vote on this. And this is two aid positions for both the emotional support and the autistic support classrooms. <clears throat> uh, that's the addition of autistic support services at the primary level. <clears throat> Um, and the autistic support classroom that we're, we're taking from the IU. This was built into all of our presentations, both of these aid positions. It was accounted for financially and so forth, but we didn't take action on these positions themselves. Uh, and so I'll be asking the board to take action on those positions, and then we're able to fill them. The autistic support room has had two aids in it that we have used. We've contracted with the IU to supply those aids. We will now be taking on those aides as our own, N not those individuals necessarily, but those positions. And again, there's a cost savings with that, but it also allows us to, to hire the people that we want to and select and to train as we want to. Um, it, it, we didn't have the ES program at the elementary school, but we did account for that in budgeting for how we would staff, the, staff and it's, it's actually those mixed category classrooms. So it's an aid for each of those, okay? Thank you. Uh, next, uh, the administration will uh, provide a brief update on the plan changes to stadium access. And the board will recall that at some point we spoke with the facilities committee and, 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 and in my weekly reports to share with you that this, the Trojan field, or excuse me, the stadium field will be redone this summer. While it's closed down, it gives us the opportunity <coughs> to reflect on the access to the stadium. We had some safety incidents this year. We always have concern that our students are out for phys ed class or our Valley View students are there for recess. And so we're looking at how we should ensure the safety uh, under those circumstances and protect the field and the stadium while still uh, allowing access for our community members who are supporting us through the tax taxes and so forth. So I've asked um, Mr. Marshall uh, to lead the presentation on exactly the guidelines that we will be setting forth um, come the reopening of the stadium. It gives me a chance to say what a phenomenal job Mr. Marshall is doing as, as our athletic director and what a pleasure it was. It's, a, it's one of those really good hires that we made. So Mr. Marshall. I will be part of the presentation. I think Dr. Adams is actually going to lead the presentation, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. Dr. Adams, thank you. <laughs> so when I met with the uh, facilities committee a while ago and we started talking about the security of the stadium facility, especially during the school day, we do a ton to make sure that no one can get in the buildings and everything's real secure, then we're sending our students out. And oftentimes 
phys ed classes are going on as people are out on the track or out on the field. So uh, this is just a great time to, to tighten that security up, at least during the school day. Uh, so what we, Mr. Marshall and I put together is we started looking at uh, some other places and what they're doing. And, and I know over the past year we've gone visits on, uh, well, before we brought Mr. Marshall on board, we, we did some visits to other facilities that had the type of system that um, Mr. Gerling and I were really looking at doing and putting in a good safety <coughs> security measure for all of our students and staff. So we started to put together some guidelines just to brief, uh, review to see if this is and this is a good direction for us to take the stadium facility. So there's a stadium facility waiver release form. We don't need to really go there just yet, but just to provide an overview of, of what we really looked at is there would be some sort of online form that people would be able to complete and then bring in, or they could do it here, bring in for a registration process. That way they would have uh, badge access to the stadium facility, which would be the field and the track. So our community, our students, our staff would still have access outside. You'll see down below there where there's uh, hours of field and or track use. So there is <coughs> a, a closed period during the school day for uh, the community, but then that would give us an opportunity to have that the safe, secure facility during the school day. Uh, and but then there would be designated times that anybody could go out and walk the track or use the field if it's for the individual use. Uh, the Saturday morning, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, pick up flag football games that don't register through our process. Those types of things hopefully would go away because they would they would have to go through the regular rental process if, if they decided to do that. Now, if a father wanted to take his, or a mother wanted to take their son or their daughter down to the field, they would just have to make sure that they, as long as they're a community member, they could come in, get a badge, go through the process, sign the waiver form, get their badge, and then they would have access to the field outside of the school day. And even during the school day, during the months of uh, November, January, February. That's typically the time that phys ed's not going outside unless we get a, a, a 78 degree February day and then we get a 35 degree <laughs> May day. <laughs> Those are switched, but it'll, it'll still provide for the community to be able to use their field and the facilities. Um, but we would have a little bit more handle on who's using it because there's gonna be uh, a, the turn style gate out there with a camera on the access control so that we know who is coming and going, which will be very helpful. Uh, we looked at it issuing just a, it would be a badge. Uh, no, I can't, I never have mine not on me. I left it at home, so I couldn't even get in the building. <laughs> I had to call Dr. Ellis. So uh, we would have uh, a badge like this, but a non pitcher It would just be a number identifying it, so when they filled out, provided proof of residency that they are a York Suburban Community member. Uh, they pay their $5 to, to cover the cost of the badge. They pay their $5 fee, and then they can get a badge, and that's just an annual renewal process. And I know at facilities, I think we even talked about doing that annually. That way, if there are updates to any of our uh, guidelines that we want to have or any changes we're going to make, that way they're signing annually and, and, and going through that uh, registration process. And Along with that, too, I think there's ownership on the community. If they're having to go through a process of signing their name, that they're going to follow the rules and they're not going to take our soccer goals across our uh, runways and damage anything out there, I think it, I think we're just going to have the, the really nice facility that we have out there. I think we'll hopefully be able to maintain that in its condition maybe even a little bit longer. Uh, prime example is last night. Um, or no, Friday night, we were going down to the lacrosse game and there was just a, just a small group of guys playing football out there, which was fine, but then it's right at the end of our track practice and some things going on. So again, those are hopefully the things that we're just gonna be able to tighten up a little bit. And then I don't think we'll necessarily need to hit, you guys will have, all have access to the, the waiver and all the rules that we put in there. And it's just a, hopefully a very comprehensive list of uh, some things they're able to do and not able to do um, that will, again, help with the security and the safety of that of that facility. We're not going to do any, Trojan Field is still going to be open, am I correct? Yes, you are correct. Trojan Field will be open. We're, that a won't 10 be. 10-foot fence with that. <laughs> yeah, so the, for, 
I'm sure there will still be the, the normal use that we see on a Sunday afternoon here at the stadium that's unauthorized pick up a, like a group use. Mm -hmm. uh, that will probably still occur a little bit at Trojan Field, but I, at least this summer we'll only have that open, but hopefully our teams will be able to access, will be on there, which will limit some of that pickup. Um, we're hopeful also that just the general flow of people out there um, during practice times or during track practice, that won't happen. Or some fitness trainers that are coming in and, and taking sleds and weights out on the turf, hopefully they won't have that access. Or if they do come, if they're a community member and they come to get that access, then it specifically states in there, do not take equipment out on the track or the, or the, or the turf. So, will staff be have will their badge automatically let them in? Yes, thank you for asking that. Staff will, so our badges will gain us access, and we're also going to provide access to the students because we don't want to limit student access to have to come over and register. So there's there's student ID cards. It'll either be the ID card that they already have, um, or and or a badge system that that ID card will go on a badge system. So those are still some of the things I know met with, with Mr. Gerling today in Simplex and they presented another potential option for us. So um, I haven't shared all those things out yet. So before I say <laughs> too much, I want to make sure that right. I have an opportunity to speak with uh, No, Dr. I just Merkel wanted to make that. sure it's not like they're going to have to pay $5 for a different no, badge or the, something. Yeah. The staff badges will work. Uh, yeah. Our students will have access. So they we will not be limiting any <coughs> access uh, to the students. Oh, I mean, outside of the, the times that, that right. we had put together there. And if, if I am a York Suburban community member and I want to bring, you know, 20 of my best friends for a flag football game, then I'm not allowed to do that. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. But if you want to bring, you know, one or two of your kids with you or if you have yeah. Three, then yes, then that's allowed. But and it even states in the in the guidelines that it's for the badges that for yeah the badges for individual use only. Yeah. You have to have a badge for everybody in there. Not the not the children. Not the children. Yeah. I, I mean just I'm just curious when it says annual renewal process. I think you have to let people know that even if they say show up in March and apply, they're going to have to reapply July one because it's a July one to June thirtieth our year here kind of thing. I don't know if that'll cause any No, and th and that issues. that's not in here what what we showed but in the the form that they signed <coughs> with all the rules, that's part of it. And it, it okay. It's, I haven't read those in detail. I'm yeah, sorry and about and that. And it's no, that's okay. And it says it's a July 1st renewal each year. So on the June 30th, we'll deactivate them unless they want to come in uh, prior to prior that to that and and secure their their uh, the activation of their badge. I, I appreciate this. I would just like, as we always say, if you put a date on something like this, so we know what date you kind of put this oh, we can do that. Acts out, just kind of thing. And it's a stadium facility guide. I was thinking maybe for community access slash use. I don't know if you're going to put this out any place or put this on the website or something like that. You might want to. We will be a little bit more. We will be putting that out, and uh, the signs that are going to go up on the stadium that'll. Um, notify them that the facility is going to be closed for a little while. Um, it's going to even refer them to, now I didn't put anything out there yet because I sure. wanted to oh, present sure. everybody here first, but they're, they're, the signs that we're going to put on the stadium for the closing of this summer will we'll refer them to the website where they'll be able to locate guidelines. Thank you for including uh, board members in the no charge for our cards. That's yeah, very nice. Charge. We'll come in and sign up for papers. <laughs> I know that we've had some issues with um, the facility itself getting harmed. I hate to see this. I really wish that we could be open um, and not have to make community members jump their boots and walk on the track. But I, I get, I get that the facility itself is is getting harmed. I'd like to hear. I just, when we say safety, other than the safety of the facility, the track, the, the field itself, I'm wondering what kind of things have we had happen that we think that 
this will help with. So I, phys ed wise, I know we haven't had anything during the school day, mm -hmm. but I will oftentimes get questions if we go into lockdown or um, if we're sending our kids out and the teachers are taking their kids outside and they know that we're very secure there and then they go out and there, there will be people that they may have to ask to, to move off to the side or they may be using a Trojan field and there are people out there so they have to ask them to leave. Now that will still happen because we're not locking Trojans down. But just the use and the security of making sure that it's a teaching station for our high school kids and really elementary because the elementary phys ed teachers take them out. That way when they're out there, we know that it's, that's a teaching station for us mm -hmm. so that it won't be interference with anybody from the community. So, so that's what we do. <coughs> it's, just, it's, it's outstanding to me that somebody would pick a gym class time to walk and try to get the community with them. That's the kind of safety that you're talking about. We haven't seen anything. We've had, in the evenings, we've had uh, three years ago, I want to say, we had a, a soccer player, a female soccer player, very uncomfortable, someone kind of stalking, kind of watching her to the point where I worked with uh, Sergeant Lehman and Chief Schwartz on that um, issue to try to identify who that person was. Um, so Dr. Adams, I'm going to jump in, okay. too. There was a, a Sunday afternoon incident that was actually quite alarming to us. Um, I happened to be in the office and looking out, and there were some um, folks here who were not community members um, and engaged in some activities on the field. But there was also a high school boy out there with three young boys, and they were playing football down in the end zone while this other activity was going on. Um, not particularly alarming in the moment, but what we learned occurred, there was an altercation that occurred with the um, older, and I would say young adults that were on the field, that then led to a police chase from our parking lot, which then led to the death of someone when they ran into a house in the community. And so um, while that was an extreme case, I kept reflecting on those children in our community were on that field at that time when this took place, and if it hadn't left the campus, what could have happened on campus? Um, and and that's a, that is a group that um, some of the folks who are involved in that are not strangers to our facility and, and to our property on off times. At the same time, we have the Valley View children will often use the track as a break. When the playground is wet and they can't be outside for recess, they, come, they go out on the track. And there will be folks on the track uh, and or trainers using equipment th that are out there. That, and, and when asked to leave, it's very difficult for the phys ed teachers to ask folks to leave yeah, or no, the classroom. And so it's, it's not so much in response to a single incident or actually we have about two or three that we would document, but we're never quite sure who, who those folks are. And, and, and it's, it is a, it's an added strain to the educational component when the phys ed teachers have to confront that. So. All right, thank you. So given the scenario that you just referenced, um, having, to act, having to have a card to access doesn't um, alter the fact that somebody can hop the fence and go in. Mm -hmm. so, so since we do have, they will have to have access via a card, should something like that happen then, does that set us up, the district up for... Uh, from a legal standpoint? I mean, is, is that part of this logic, or is it really just more of a deterrent um, from people using the facilities that aren't registered or, or, or that we don't know would have? And I don't want to play semantic games. Our, our goal isn't so much to deter as it is to encourage those who are using it appropriately to come in and use it appropriately. And, and I, that is a semantic issue, but uh -huh. but it really is an outreach to our community to say, you're very welcome. Please come use it and use it well and, and help protect our community. Uh -huh. And it isn't to suggest that somebody couldn't get a $5 badge and be one of those folks who engages in an altercation. By yeah. no means do I want to suggest that. But because 
we have the badge access, we know who the person is, or at least who owns that badge, and we also will be putting the camera in um, to, oh, that's right. to, okay. to monitor yeah. some of that. So um, it, it is <coughs> not going to answer all of that, but it is going to say that we do value what the community is, is providing for the district, and we do value um, safety beyond just when the students are in the classroom, but when they're in the outdoor classroom as well. It, it's a concern to me for sure that a personal trainer would bring equipment down there and use a public facility, a public school facility like that for personal gain. And I, I don't know what you could put on a sign or anything, but to say that it's not meant for that, because that, nothing else that annoys me that somebody would do that. And I'm sure it happens. I don't, certainly don't question that, but that's I don't know. That's a nearly daily occurrence. Mm -hmm. That's yes. a very regular occurrence. See, that's, that's just dead wrong, and we ought to say not meant for commercial use somehow and uh, I mean again that's probably not worth the you know ink it takes to write it but well but that's what we're able to monitor yeah. because now when Dr. Maloney has nothing to do in her office and she <laughs> stares out and watches the folks walk in the track she when she sees that or when when we yeah. see it and and we do we see it from our from our windows then we can deal with it and we have the badge and we can say okay Either this is your warning, or yeah, you're done. Or but but then we can limit it. Especially during the school day, that's doubly. In the <coughs> I thought you were going to say when Dr. Maloney is out there doing her part-time job as a personal trainer, but um, no. Actually, <laughs> her trainer comes and works out with her. Out there, so. <laughs> Two to three every day. There we go. <laughs> I, I I don't know if, if members of our community actually understand. We're the only track are one of the only few in the community that has left their stadium open right. to the public for years and years. And now it's our community that's paying the price because we've had, you know, redo the track, redo the, the you know, the, st the field, uh, because they've been, and, and therefore, I don't think that's fair to our our community people. I, I, I agree, I don't like having to charge them anything to get in there. I think it should be free to come and walk. But if there are people who are not treating it properly, then we have to say, we're, we're trying to strike a balance, I think, but we'll be, I guess, the last of a dying breed to uh, kind of lock down our track or something like that. Right, right. But this, I think, even gives more access than other tracks do. I don't know about Everett Central. This, it's I, locked. I, it's locked. Unless That's you it. know Mrs. Schrader and can get her keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I don't think anybody else is going to. So I think it's worth a, a shot making us a little bit more. Any other questions? Community members, audience, no? Okay, thank you for that. Thank you both very much. A lot of thought went into that, a lot of time and effort, so thank you. Uh, finally, under the superintendent's brief report is um, a, uh, an update on Let's Talk YS. Um, Let's Talk YS is, is an open forum that I hold with community, invite community members to join me uh, for an evening session on April 25th and a morning session on April 26th. And it's an hour and a half long. Uh, we, sent, we, we post it in the Pride, we send an email, and then I do a, um, a robocall the, the, the day before to encourage folks and to let them know the, the, the structure of it. It's an open forum where folks can bring their own agenda items. Um, the, the last time, the time before this, I, I had a particular agenda item and I said we wanted to particularly explore this. This time our, our topic that I, I noted as a specific agenda item was how we, soliciting feedback on how we could become a more inclusive community. Um, and I had 10 people on Tuesday evening and they all stayed for the full hour and a half, which is unusual. I usually have people coming and going um, but they came and they stayed. And similarly, on the 26th in the morning, I had nine people come and all but one stayed for the duration. And so I, I don't know if they found it interesting or <laughs> if they had just blocked it off and, and whatever. Um, the, the Tuesday evening program, we probably spent 45 minutes talking about a more inclusive community and getting feedback. We had um, notable... I believe we had five uh, uh, members of the community of color.
that came to that <coughs> moment and spoke very openly about their own experiences, uh, everything from registering as new, new, uh, new students in the district to um, being involved in PTOs to not being involved in PTOs and why and um, hardships that, that it, it, uh, our minority students sometimes face to feeling very included. And so it was a wide range. There were no real takeaways that I can say that, and first of all, it's a very small group. So a group of 10 and then a group of nine, it, it, it's not, there's nothing I could glean as, 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 a, uh, as a conclusion, but what it did was make folks feel welcome and that it was a safe topic and that we're open to feedback and open to ongoing dialogue on it. Um, one particular resident and community member who's a parent that, um, that I've engaged with in several difficult circumstances, in fact, very difficult circumstances, um, I, I had reached out some months ago to invite to lunch um, to try to understand one another, um, and I was very surprised that that individual came that night and then afterward uh, came over and said, shook my hand and said, I'd really like to go out to lunch and, and <laughs> continue this dialogue. Um, and so, you, you know, there was at least that one very concrete benefit from it. Um, the nine the, and on the second day it was much maybe 15 minutes on a more inclusive community, and, and their topics um, were, were much more broad-ranging, and it was everything from code of conduct to grading systems to the, the new student registration process, um, it, it, the whole gamut of topics. There was nothing that we spent any real focused energy on, particularly on the second day. A um, lot of good dialogue, a lot of dialogue between and amongst parents where I could just sit back and listen. Um, some were in the district for a long time, and some were pretty new to us. So that was Let's Talk YS. It's, it's worth doing. I, it's not a great crowd that I get, but 19 people felt more connected to York Suburban for that hour and a half. That's, that's, worth, that's worth my time. So. How, how large do you think that you could have it and it still be function well? I mean, and I, I understand 10 is small, but it might even be not a bad number. It, it's not a bad number. Actually, Dr. Maloney um, did the programs in the fall with me, and we probably had 10 or 12 of those. And, and that was good dialogue amongst, uh, amongst the group. I, I think we could get to 20 and still have meaningful dialogue uh, across the table and, and everybody feel a part of things. Once you move to, to numbers of 50, now it's a whole different kind of thing. It's a question, answer, give and take more than it is an open dialogue. And so... Um, I, I toy with whether or not I should increase the frequency because if I got a different 10 at each time, at the same time, I, I want to be careful that it's not stale. And, and so I did have faces at this one that I have not seen before. Um, That's what I was going to... Oh, I think more than that. I think twice a year for three years. Not working very well. Um, mine sometimes <laughs> struggles too, but I think it's been twice a year. I think this... Actually, I think it's my fifth fifth one. I think I did two in the, this year, two last year, and one the year before. That's what I was going to ask you if you're seeing the same faces come, or does it vary depending on the... Sunday, January 1st. If anybody knows, <laughs> Siri just goes off for me. Yeah. Honest. I she didn't does touch that for you me, too. all that. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Rattis. <laughs> I don't know. Delegate your homework. I was huh? actually in my evaluation with Dr. Furman today, and Siri repeated what Dr. Furman said, and she was <laughs> deeply concerned about it. <laughs> You're being bugged. Um, I would say th there are some, there are three women in particular who I see at least once a year, um, and they're pretty tough on us. Um, in fact, the three were here, and about an hour and 15 minutes into the forum, one of the women recognized that um, the gentleman seated next to me hadn't said a word and was new to the district with young children. And that parent said, now I know you wouldn't get that from all the things we've said, but we love this district. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I was getting a little nervous. And, and I said, we appreciate the open criticism. Oh, it allows you. us to grow and learn. But it, it, they felt the need to explain that to a uh, to a newcomer, so it, it was an interesting dialogue. But and do you happen to ask people how they found out about it? 
I, I don't, no. That's Just a good question what, yeah. to what, say which method works, works better. Yeah. That's a great question, yeah, thanks. I do collect emails because then when questions come up, I can get back to people with answers specific to them or if it was a group discussion and it's something I didn't know or, or I just wanted to say, boy, I learned from this, then I can reach out to that whole group. Well, I appreciate you doing it. I think it's a, a great, a great thing. I enjoy it, actually. <coughs> it's, um, it's just one of those that just it helps me feel connected to the community. So. Sure. Thank you, and that concludes my brief report this evening. Okay. Before we move on to the business office, anything from the audience or community? Okay, Ms. Mason. Thank you, Ms. Schaefer. Um, the administration is going to be, of course, recommending the budget um, for adoption, and at, of course at that meeting I'll have everything filled in, and along with that goes the resolution for the distribu distribution of the state gaming funds that we'll be receiving um, that goes towards the homestead properties. Um, we'll also be recommending that I take care of the budget transfers for year end, like the, um, that's, the, that's an annual recommendation along <coughs> with the depositories. Um, then we'll have the LIU um, joint purchase bids for custodial supplies, general supplies, paper supplies, and art supplies. Um, I believe we're going to get those bids this week, so we'll have the numbers filled in. Um, we'll be recommending a board approval of the revised use of facilities fee schedule. Did anyone have any questions on that? They're the only ones that are changing. And I didn't look back at what, what they are. The um, uh, $5 for uh, increase for the uh, custodian, IT, and stage technician, and that's all based on salary and, and, and uh, benefit increase. And the stage lighting and the lifeguard are increasing by a dollar. <laughs> Nothing increases by a dollar. Yes. Yeah. How, how often do we have, is the pool rented that we would need to provide a lifeguard? I mean, does that happen much? I, I believe we've done it since I've been here. I believe we did it twice okay, so that, I, that I recall that I was aware of, but uh, we may have done it more. Yeah, I was just curious. Dr. Adams, I think, has... We just had a recent request about that. Our, our group was going to try to do some swim testing there. Ms. Marks' response back was that we would, you know, if it was available to you during the times you were requesting, you would also we'd have to secure a lifeguard for that. Right, right. So okay. Not a lot, but yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. right. Perfect. Thank you. And the only other thing uh, that was added that we didn't gray is at the very last uh, line, uh, middle school basketball court, we added the word outdoor because there was some confusion between using the gym and what the middle school was at the bottom, so we added the word outdoor. Okay. Um, we'll recommend the annual renew of Gladfelder Agency as our broker. Um, the, um, we'll also be recommending the board approve the bid to Verco for the furniture that we'll be um, purchasing for Valley View and Yorkshire for their additional kindergarten rooms, um, the autistic room, uh, and both uh, emotional support rooms. And also for the high school will be for the cafeteria. <coughs> We'll be asking for approval of the appointment of stock and leader um, as the solicitor of record for another year. We will be also asking for approval on the Pittsburgh stage to do the stage renovations at the high school auditorium. Um, that'll include replacement of the curtains, relocation of the rigging, and replacing the floor. Um, as you recall, we talked about this through capital plan. We did add the relocation of the rigging um, in anticipation of um, the lights um, being changed out in the next couple years. In order to do that, um, the rigging needs to be changed, and if we do it now, we won't have to worry about replacing the curtains again. So this kind of saves us some money up front on that. Just to be clear, 
clear, we had originally budgeted 91, a little under $91,000, so this is up $40,000 because of those, the, the change in the scope of work, which will allow us to move forward in a year or two with some of the lighting and, and other things. I guess it was pay now or pay later or something like that. Um, co the uh, contracts for Wise Haven um, for the um, homecoming dance in the fall and the contract for catering sales or yeah, the catering sales agreement with Wyndham Garden for the prom for next year. Those contracts are going to be up for approval already. A quick question. When did we start going out for homecoming? Yeah. Has that been a while? I thought it was in the gym. I thought it was just this past just year. Last year. Last year. Not this current school year, but the prior school year we left. And is that to protect the floor? What's the thinking behind? It's student interest. They express an interest to be able to go off site and, and the student body has raised the funds to be able to support that. So they just really like the chance to get off away from campus to feel a little bit more significant of that. That's how they describe it to me. Thank you. We'll be looking for approval on a three-year agreement with Wellspan for the athletic trainer services and an annual cost of 28.5, and that cost is a decrease um, with what we're currently paying. They will no longer be reimbursing us the $3,000 for the training supplies, though, so that's kind of like the trade-off, and that price is um, set for the three years at the 28.5. The middle school is, I'm sorry, was there a question? He's just having an emotional moment. Oh, okay. I'm overcome. My, my friend was over. yeah. <laughs> We'll also be asking approval of the establishment of a student activity account for the York uh, Middle School for a middle school yearbook account. What? I just, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I had a question. Oh. I was just wondering what kind of things they're planning to do to raise money. Does anybody have any ideas what they're planning to do? Because I mean, they have a big magazine sale for the for the student council, I believe, at the middle school each year, and I just didn't know what else they might be planning to do. I don't know. I don't know that. That was part of the back application. I'm just <laughs> kind of curious as to what they might be planning to do. Um, we'll also be asking approval of the five-year contract with Whitson's Culinary Group. Um, through the RFP process, Whitson's um, seemed to be the, the overall favorite, and they did meet all the requirements that were asked of the RFP. So, um, and in, in addition to that, we'll be asking approval for the food service budget and the setting of the lunch and breakfast prices as follows. Um, it is a 10 cent increase both for elementary or all three elementary, secondary, and adult. We'll increase the adult this year as well. Irene, um, could you speak to the logic behind the increase so that the minutes have a record that that's there's a there's a link there with the requirement? It's it's based on the calculation that the Department of Ed or Department of Nutrition has put into place. I believe it's three years now. Um, there's a calculation process we have to go through um, to determine whether we're making too much money is, is really what it comes down to is because the food service is not supposed to be making um, money. It's supposed to be a break even. Um, but through this calculation, they come up with uh, what the average would be, what you need to be so that you're not making more money than you should be making. So as a result, and, it, and as part of that, while they also have the calculation, um, it also says you can't increase more than a dime. So that's where the dime comes in. But in fact, we have to increase, correct? I mean, increasing would make, seem to make us make more money. So 
I thought it was that we were paying, we were charging too little to their. It, well, it's it it. There's twofold. It's it's what are you charging, but it's also how much are you selling. Because if you really look at the calculation for this year, our increase actually grew. Our gap is is more now because our sales were really up for this year. So instead of only having like next year for this year, we were within a penny, meaning for fifteen six sixteen seventeen. For 17 <coughs> our difference was actually $0.17 cents instead of $0.11, cents. and it's because our sales activity. <coughs> so it's a whole formula. We plug in the numbers, and then they tell us what we have to charge. Okay. I, I, just, I just thought it was important that the community know that it's not just random thought for York Suburban to increase their food prices, that, that you know there is another entity that says, that directs us, I guess, is what I want to say. Right. It's part of the lunch program. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the last item is uh, a c approval of a contract with Lead Smart Coaching, LLC, in the amount of $3,700 for a day of administrative training and coaching in the area of mindfulness and school leadership. Any okay. questions? Go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, where we're approving our uh, food service, Whitson's again for a five-year contract. Is there any reason that we should put in some kind of dollar amount, or what's this costing us, or anything, for, it, for so that the community who hasn't heard the conversation knows what we're? You, what we're doing? we can't do that. That's that actually is part of the budget process. If you remember, even though we're approving a five-year contract, we have to annually approve okay. Whitson's as the contractor, and that's really all we're doing is we're approving them as the the food service management company. The budget is what takes care of that piece. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm hmm. Any other questions? I just have one fun question. Years ago when um, they talked about um, money from uh, the gaming funds, it was referred to as um, slots for tots. I'm wondering if that's still used in any circles. I never heard that before. Didn't hear that one. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you can store that one away. So okay. Use some future time. Okay, any questions from the community? All right, we'll move on to the student board rep. Mr. Stewart. Yeah. So as of right now, there's a lot of AP testing going on at the high school. Uh, today featured the AP biology exam, and tomorrow features the AP calculus exam. Oh, sorry. Um, for, our ten uh, for our sports seasons, the tennis season came to a close two weeks ago. Um, we sent six kids, no, four kids, two counties for singles, and then three doubles pairs to counties. So we had the largest portion of a school at for both singles and doubles at counties. Um, Tier Abenshain placed third in counties, moved on to districts, but then got out in the first round. And Daniel Lee placed fourth and didn't make it on to districts, but pl placed fourth. That's pretty good. Um, for our doubles teams, Dan and Tier together placed second in counties and then lost in districts. So, great round for the tennis team. Um, the track and field team finished last Wednesday and last Friday night they had a Battle of the Bridge. They competed in Battle of the Bridge, they won many medals, and the postseason is going to continue with counties and districts coming up and hopefully states for some of them. Um, volleyball, the boys' volleyball team is doing well, like always, especially like last year. So we're hoping that they have a great run this year. Um, baseball and softball, they gave a good effort this year. They'll come back and they'll get it next year. Um, lacrosse, the boys had a great run. They're going to counties. Even though they lost on Friday to West York, they still make it into counties. Um, the girls lacrosse team, they had two wins in the season, but that's okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, prom is next Friday, May 20th, and it's followed by post-prom, which is from 11 to 3, going into Saturday morning, and um, Sunday morning, so that's Luau-themed. Um, uh, finals are the following week, and then graduation is Thursday the 25th, so a lot of seniors are very excited. It's two weeks away. Um, last week, we had the Senior Awards Ceremony, which 
where scholarships and other like awards for just a senior class were given out. And then next Monday at 7 o'clock is the overall academic award ceremony with like individual class awards, and, like top 5, top 10%, and things like that. Uh, the National English Honor Society uh, elected new officers last week and had a preliminary planning meeting for the next year. And then last Tuesday, we read at Valley View, like we always do. Um, the National Honor Society is babysitting tonight at Valley View. Um, they're having flower sales at graduation, and we plan for next year. Um, Elise Atkinson, uh, the next student board rep, was awarded the White Rose in the one paper for her dress drive and collecting over 900 dresses and then delivering them to students of need for prom this this season. <coughs> uh, last Thursday was the Spring Pops concert for the choir, orchestra, and band. went very well. Um, a lot of people attended, so it was a great event. Uh, the jazz band. Uh, last week they had like their jazz night, which is one like the middle school as well as I think the Indian Rock and East York jazz bands and the high school have like a coffee house jazz band. And tomorrow they perform at Cherry Lane like they always do. Uh, student council is just planning for next year. We have already started homecoming preparations, which will be at Wise Haven as we said. Um, we have the minithon chairs elected for next year, and we're finishing the final details for prom. And finally, next week uh, includes keystone testing for the underclassmen for both biology and algebra. And this week is the bio boot camp led by the biology teachers, I believe, Ms. Skensel, Ms. Steyer, and Mr. Gunji. At least that's what it was when I was a freshman. They take an entire week after school, and all the freshmen come into room 160, and they learn everything about biology. <laughs> In one week. In one week, yeah. Uh, any questions? Uh, just some questioning, and I don't even know if you know, but is post prom really uh, let out at three this year? Yes. So how does that work for all of our kids that are driving and off, off of a uh, curfew? Well, I mean, where I work at the country club, like as long as you're going home, past curfew, and it does, curfew doesn't really matter as long as you're driving safely, so as long as you're driving safely, <laughs> and and you're on your way, okay, it, it matters, but like, you, you can only be pulled yeah, over, right, right, right. Not safely, <laughs> but as long as you're like on your way home. It was all night. Yeah, I'm just wondering at what point did it change? They would it would if end at six. Yeah, yeah the, please. The, the, the we're kind of at a crossroads with post prom, and they're struggling to maintain the program and and evaluate um, its 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 place. Um, student participation has been down. Um, it, it's been difficult to get leadership from the parental perspective, um, and and so process from the parents and it is parent run it's not a school run activity right. it's parent run um, the thought process is to see if by reducing the hours that maybe they're going to have increased participation yeah. but this is the first year that this has it's this gotten has shorter and shorter yeah. each year I got so um, okay. we've seen yeah it, it started out at 6 or 7 a.m. in right. the first year it and, and, yeah. so, and, it's, and students used to have to stay the whole time they did. Yeah. then there was then there, then it backed off to you could have permission to leave under certain circumstances, and so it's been scrolling back since um, since its inception. And and it it may be time to take a break from it. It may be time to make it look a little different, and and the group is reevaluating that. Hmm. Any other questions for Mr. Stewart? Audience. Okay. Well, thank you for that comprehensive report. Uh, we'll go to move on to committee reports. Um, Mr. Eaton, I understand you're stepping in for finance this evening. Well, the minutes of March 29th are provided for your review. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that comprehensive report. Cool. He might be called on more often. <laughs> LSE review, Mr. Toman. Uh, the uh, the minutes of our February 14th <coughs> uh, meeting will be provided or are provided. 
Um, we will have four policies uh, recommended for approval, which are um, by the committee and have substantive changes to them. Um, we will also be recommending six policies for approval that have uh, been reviewed by the administrative team and have minor revisions, basically. <coughs> Uh, and then 13 policies will be recommended for reapproval uh, that have been reviewed by the administrative team and have no changes necessary. Are there any questions on any of the policies? Do we have to, re do we have to um, approve the ones that have no change? I think the thought was that we were re, we're putting a new date on Put them. Put a new date on right. it. So it's reapproval. Then what it does is slow down the right. pace at which the board oh, has to, yeah. yes, I thought you might. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, the, the one dealing with field trips that has changed that, uh, unless it's an overnight trip, the superintendent is going to be, I believe, approving them. It's not coming to the board. Could you at some point just give us some, even quarterly, just out of curiosity, where some of these kids are, where some of these trips are going, they go to the Strand, they go wherever, just so that we know <coughs> what they're doing. And sometimes they get money from their PTOs to help sponsor those trips? And I'm happy to share at any point. I think that's up to the board, the frequency. Um, and I assume it would be under superintendent report. So I don't know if you want to yeah, discuss that with the board yeah, to see that. Might be interesting. That's just you know, sort of an informational an item. Informational item or something like that. On a quarterly? Yeah. Whatever you think is appropriate. I mean, I, I don't know if there's, you know, flurries different points of the year that. Good weather. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, we will add that to our list, Dr. Maloney, won't we? <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. It's really kind of minor, but in the field trip uh, under the purpose section, the second bullet point, I, I maybe love this. It, Here we go, go, Rich. Can we just change that first word to develop? Yes, sir. <laughs> just, I don't know. Okay, I need to see that. What was it? No, I got to check it out now. Too. It just seems kind of. Odd to use that. Encourage. Term. Arouse. Encourage. Encourage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Arouse. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Development. Yeah. Arouse suspicion. Uh -huh. no. Encourage or develop. What do we like? <laughs> Makes no difference. Where is it? Your call. Your call. <laughs> it's under purpose. Encourage. Purpose. Encourage. Purpose. 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 Encourage. Okay, there you go. Brilliant choice. There it will go. be so noted and changed for, for board action at the May 26th, 26th meeting. Feeling I'm blushing. boy, Rich. There you go. Uh, Any other comments or questions? I have one, actually, that I, I unfortunately, I, I didn't think of uh, when I was at the policy committee meeting. Um, the code of conduct, which is very lengthy, and if you scroll to... Um, the very end of it, which is, hang on a second, it's um, <coughs> the secondary academic integrity code consequences. So, okay, you, uh, well, I'm uh, um, right now I'm on page two because my computer's not scrolling very quickly, but it's it's well beyond that. It's one of the last pages. There, oh, oh. Oh, you're right there. Now down a little more. Scroll. Continue to scroll. Keep what going. page is it? Are you there yet? Keep going. Boy, this is really slow. <coughs> oh, it's okay. almost at the very um, end. Yeah. yeah. I'll find it in here. Yes. Say again, Kathy, what you said. It's, um, it's, I think the section is called Secondary Academic Integrity Code. Mm -hmm. That's page 23 of 24. Okay. Are you all there yet? Okay. So what part of it? Well, what I, what I would put forth and would really like to hear what everyone else thinks, um, 
when when there's discussion about um, the first and second offenses, I, I'm I'm wondering if we're when we're talking about second offenses, um, if we should be specific with respect to um, the impact it could have uh, with the National Honor Society membership. High school students, second option. Mm -hmm. It's actually page 24, if you're still yeah. searching. <clears throat> it, it seems to me that um, if you, you know, blew it one time and you're given a second chance um, and you're nailed again, it just seems to me that there should be, uh, given the fact that National Honor Society, um, one of their uh, four characteristics or one of the four criteria that they evaluate is character, and it seems to me that speaks to character if you're, you know, um, violating a second time. So I would just put that forth for a reaction. So you're suggesting that if there's a second offense that specifically you be ineligible, ineligible for National Honor Society? Yes. What are the requirements for National Honor Society as far as um, this fits into it? Well, one issue that might uh, come up in that regard is that the membership and status in National Honor Society is dependent upon the faculty council. And I don't know that an outside criteria like a school board policy could supersede that. And national policy, too. Isn't well, it? well, that's what I mean. It uh -huh. comes from a national... I mean, uh, you guys are more qualified to speak to that than I, but I think that would be kind of a problem with national to have that be an issue that the board policy would supersede what they said. And what I, what, what I like about the manner in which it's written is, for example, what this allows for is discretion. There are national guidelines for National Honor Society that, that determine that a faculty council does, does make that determination. Uh, what this allows is, what if you have that ninth grade student who has two offenses early in their career and then makes some real changes in the manner in which they have become a student and a citizen? And do we want to do we want to go that far? Now, faculty council may agree that, yes, we should go back that far, but what are the circumstances of it, what was going on in that child's life, it does allow for that idea of, of looking at it as a case-by-case -case as opposed to a, a strict across-the-line prohibition. This would not prohibit faculty council from keeping a student out the way it's currently written. But if we write it in as a matter of fact, if even the National Honor Society guidelines would allow us to do so, it, it, it becomes the law. It doesn't allow the opportunity for those exceptions in unusual cases. And, and I just think of that young, immature <coughs> ninth grade student who, who makes some errors or is in a bad way in ninth grade and has made significant changes. and. Again, it certainly isn't um, out of the range of possibilities here. Actions may include loss of privileges, ineligibility for honor rolls, and academic honors. If we saw a student who had a major violation and then another major violation with no real change in, in citizenship, <coughs> I would fully expect that the council would, would move in that in, in that direction. I, I, I'm just not sure that we want to become that body that that mandates that specific. I understand the thought process and integrity is an important part of, of National Honor Society and other honor societies, but um, that's the thought process behind it. And, and the, the process that the, the uh, what's it called, the uh, uh, council? Faculty Council, um, that's set forth by National Honor Society. 
there's there's a, there's a list of and there are a list of criteria correct and and how does this compare with what is listed there doesn't have anything doesn't say anything about offenses no no this yeah, right this is separate from I guess, I guess I'm individually comfortable with the way it's written. I agree that you would want to be able to do that, but um, I guess I'm willing to leave it up to the faculty council. Anybody else? No. Is everybody okay with it? That's written? Okay, well, thanks for that discussion. Um, any other? I think that was I was the last one to speak. I think everyone else spoke. So okay. Um, any reaction or comments from the audience? No. Okay. Uh, any additional committee reports or announcements? I, guess I should come under uh, facilities committee. We will be canceling our meeting uh, that was scheduled for uh, next week. Uh, next week for the, on the 17th. Um, there are no further uh, bids that will have to be looked at, and we will see that a, an upgraded timeline, if you will, of the projects is distributed to the board. Uh, then the committee will meet in June to make sure everything is set and ready to go for the, uh, the summer projects. Thank you. Any others? Academic Standards meets uh, next week on Tuesday, the 16th at 4.30. And, and I wonder... <coughs> Dr. Adam would talk about Friday night. I just think it's such a cool thing, the the wellness night. I don't know how familiar the board is with it, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, Friday night, we're having wellness night. All the elementary students are invited, and Fun, we do fun warm-ups on the field with them. So we get all the elementary kids that come. It's free. They come out. They go on the stadium. Lead them through some fun warm-ups. No, it's not <laughs> serious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fun that is. With them with the, the <laughs> elementary that mascots. Scary. So we have four high school students that dress up in the mascots, and we do a fun run with them. And then we put them in two sport clinics. And then we get a BYSL pitcher, along with there's slaves. educational <laughs> tables from the community, a uh, wellness I table set up for all the other giveaways, and every I'm student wants to play. last year so it was a rain date and the rain date didn't work out so well but two years ago we had over 140 elementary students and yeah. over 50 high school student athletes helping with that so it's, uh, it's going to be chilly on Friday but <laughs> I know the high school students will be there with me. I just think it's a cool yeah, cool thing to have the two levels interacting that way and just wanted you to share thank you thank you okay. anything else okay um mr robinson are your uh, your uh, reports coming to a close yes here? my time is short <laughs> yes. at lincoln intermediate unit so i'll have the uh, distinct privilege of reporting on the uh, last meeting of what was it may 2nd where there was a fascinating presentation by Dr. Sharp announcing that the crisis response team has changed its name to the incident response team. So from now on, we're not going to have any crises. We're only going to have incidents. <laughs> uh, but she described the team of 15 psychologists and two counselors that were, will be ready to launch into action to address any incidents that may require their attention. And it was really kind of an interesting discussion and the interplay between the uh, the IU personnel and the personnel of a, a specific district, especially in uh, monitoring uh, mental health incident or mental illness incident among the student body, 
and the question of uh, the student's resilience and who actually calls the shots in these particular episodes. Uh, and, and in that sense, the, the uh, district always has control over when to say, okay, we'll take it from here. Thanks for your help. Right off into the sunset and await the next incident. Uh, other than that, the other highlight was an announcement by Mr. Mader of the first Google Summit to explore the educational potential of Google. And he was very high on that. And basically, that was it. Everything else is uh, under control. Businesses being, uh, the business office is being audited, but there is nothing to report there. Any questions? Ask now. I only have two more meetings left. Okay. Any questions from the audience? Okay, moving on to York Adams Academy. Yeah, um, some major staffing changes going on. I'm sure all of you have read in the paper that Dr. Lenardi will be leaving the West York School District as superintendent moving to Downingtown, and she has been our superintendent of record this year. So uh, the superintendents, we will be choosing her successor to uh, step in there at York Adams. And we also received notice this week that Mr. Dave Detzel, who has been our director for seven years, is going to be moving from the area. <coughs> And so we will be in search of a new director, uh, and we have begun that process um, just this week. So I will keep you posted on what we will be doing. Okay. Any questions? Audience? Okay, moving on to your county school of technology. Yes. Um, I, I, as is often the case when you know you say, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Uh, you know, I started sitting on the the uh, Joint Operating Committee at, at the School of Technology, not really knowing much about it, and I've become such a fan uh, of the good things that they do there. I just wanted to share with you, there are six, okay, five and a half pages of service programs that the students at the School of Technology uh, did uh, over the course of the school year, and it's amazing, things all the way from Habitat for Humanity, the servicing vehicles, their shop, each of their shops, the, the automotive technology did the servicing the school vans and uh, as well as vehicles for staff and students throughout the year. Um, the construction students made um, concrete planters for the town of Delta. I mean, it's just, it's amazing the things that, that they do in terms of of uh, service. The cosmetology uh, students uh, did manicures and pedicures at one of the uh, retirement homes. They also did it, I think, for their preschool that they have there. Oh, I, yes, yes. I heard from one preschooler how much fun that was. Oh, good, oh, good. <laughs> but anyway, just to share, and, and these are our students, too. Uh, I just wanted to share the... Um, some of the good things that, that they do there, but I, I've become a, a real fan of uh, the programs and the, the things that go on there. Uh, I also need to share with you that um, I guess Ken Phillips has been really busy because, you know, we got the capital improvement things here. Well, they did the same thing at the tech school, and they're um, going to be doing a uh, uh, capital funds um, redoing of the um, bonds and rolling things over and taking out some new for some uh, capital work that needs to take place at the tech school. Um, the <coughs> long and short of it is, and I know they have a superintendent's meeting coming up, in which case Dr. Uh, Merkel will have to pay close attention uh, to the what's, what's happening there to just sort of back me up and, and be able to answer any questions. Um, taking out uh, $2 million in new money, I believe was the figure for some capital improvements, uh, but because of interest rates and all, we're actually, our annual um, bond payment will actually be about $30,000 less, but will continue for a, a longer period of time. Uh, but uh, it's, it's work that I believe needs to, uh, needs to uh, take place and of course will be, you know, have to be approved by um, actually the, um, the board that 
John sits on, not the Joint Operating Committee, but the, the overseeing board that is in charge of the, the facility as opposed to what, what my committee does in terms of the, the academics. Uh, so that's, that's coming in the, in the short term, but I just to give us a heads up that that's, that that's happening. That unless there are questions, that would conclude my report. Questions, audience? Okay, thank you. Um, the board meeting and committee schedule is attached. And any other questions? Yes. I just had one <coughs> comment that I didn't know where to put it, <laughs> so I'll do it now. And that's, um, I think that Spring Garden Township has canceled their um, summer program, including the um, park. park program, which I know is run on at least one of our campuses. Um, and I just wondered if we, as a district, saw any opportunity there for some of our, especially sports camps. Um, I don't know if there's any coordination so that the community can know that there are some things that are going to be out there. It won't be like park, I understand. Well, and the big difference is we're really looking at two different audiences because the park program is $100 for the entire summer. Mm -hmm. And it's supplemented, of course, by tax dollars that go into the rec program. And so any kind of a sports camp costs that and more for a week. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we didn't, we didn't target it at that specifically. <coughs> we also have the Bright Horizons summer right. program that runs. Um, we did have two community members call about it um, and raise question and concern. And uh, Mrs. Mason and I did look at our summer program to say, is there, is this an opportunity? But they are very, very different kinds of programs. Um, so it's it's really a shame, quite frankly. Yeah, it's really hard to that. understand. Yeah. 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 Terrible. I mean, it leaves a huge hole. I'm sure. And it was late in the game for parents, really and that's late. been the frustration for Some parents. people had already registered. Mm -hmm. yeah. And their reason for it, I was in spring, their was very staffing. Their, staffing. Pers their person uh, resigned. I, know, I hope that doesn't I mean, they're, whatever. You know, us. individual parks is typically done by high school kids, you know, sure. they're sure. workers. But so. they're overall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's a shame. Yeah. Yes? Same position, kind of, Emily. I had two things I wanted to make up, and sure. I don't know where they go. One was I wanted to follow up on what uh, Peyton had said. I had the privilege of going to both the concerts at the middle school and the high school last week, and packed house for both of them. Uh, the uh, middle school was just a wonderful performance, and then the Pops concert here, there were several standing ovations, and it was a packed house last week. It was really, truly, uh, for both the singers and the band and the choir and the orchestra, it was absolutely, and uh, Mrs. Thrush had put together a, a video of their trip to Florida this year, and they timed it with their last uh, um, last song that they did with their, li and it was really, really a very, very good night. And the other one was that at the annual Law Day program sponsored by the Bar Association, we had a gentleman from the uh, middle school who took second place in the bumper sticker awards, a Michael Forster uh, from the eighth grade took second place, and he and Dr. Krauser were at the program. So it was very, very nice to see our kids participating in these community events. And for anybody who wants to know, I'll be at Cherry Lane tomorrow at 1130 to see the jazz bands if anybody wants to come down and have lunch uh, at the market. A lot of fun. Thank you. Anyone else? Any just general questions from the community, audience, accolades? Okay. All right. Okay. Then we are adjourned.